Now, because these additions of heteroatomic nucleophiles to carbonyl groups are often reversible, we need to think about the thermodynamics of the situation and really make use of the stability factors to predict the favored side. And let's start by just thinking about nucleophilic addition. Under basic reaction conditions, strong nucleophiles are going to be involved, almost universally anionic nucleophiles. And here, to decide which side of this addition equilibrium is favored, what we really need to think about is the relative stabilities of the anions on each side. On the left side, we have the nucleophile anion, nu minus, and we're really thinking about the stability of that in relation to O minus. And here are things like resonance stabilization of the nucleophile, the electronegativity of the anionic atom in the nucleophile relative to the electronegativity of oxygen, and other factors like this will come into play. Inductive effects in the nucleophile versus this oxyanion. All of these five stability factors can play a role in the favored side of this addition equilibrium. Under acidic reaction conditions, the idea is actually similar, except now we're dealing with positively charged species on both sides, the protonated carbonyl compound on the left side, and a tetrahedral intermediate in which the nucleophile is now positively charged on the right-hand side. And so under acidic conditions, the idea again is that we want to focus on the stabilities of the ions, but now we're dealing with cations rather than anions. And so our focus now is on the stability of this positively charged oxygen relative to the stability of the positive charge after the nucleophile has linked the, to the carbonyl carbon. And just as in the case above, the principles that allow us to make these comparisons of stability are the five stability factors that we've discussed previously. And I have a series of videos on these from Chem 2311 that are worth revisiting if you're unfamiliar with these. Now there we just looked at nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl group and oxygen, the carbonyl oxygen, was involved on one side or the other in both of those examples. But we can also apply these principles to nucleophilic acyl substitution as a whole. For example, when we use a strong nucleophile under basic conditions, on one side of the reaction, on the reactant side, we have the anionic nucleophile. On the product side, way over on the product side, we have a new anion, the conjugate base of the leaving group, X minus. And the key to determining the favored side is which of these two is more stable, and we can make that determination typically using one of the five stability factors. If X minus is more stable than nu minus, if X is a good leaving group relative to nu, in other words, the reaction will go forward spontaneously. On the other hand, if X is a stronger nucleophile than nu minus, X minus is a stronger nucleophile than nu minus, or nu minus is a better leaving group, than X minus, then the reaction will go backwards spontaneously. And we need to use some kind of other strategy than simple nucleophilic acyl substitution if we want this reaction to go forward. Under acidic reaction conditions, we're often dealing with neutral reactants and products. And so here, maybe it's not as obvious, how do we think about which side is favored? I would actually encourage you to think about the conjugate bases of the nucleophile and X just as if this reaction were occurring under basic conditions. Because what it comes down to ultimately is which of the two potential nucleophiles, H nu on the left-hand side and Hx on the right-hand side, is weaker. That side will be favored. So let's say, for example, that using the stability factors and thinking about X minus versus nu minus, the conjugate bases of these, we determined that Hx was the weaker nucleophile of the two. We could conclude from this that the reaction would proceed forward spontaneously, and that the favored side would be the product side. We'll see a number of examples of this as we work through specific reactions involving nucleophilic acyl substitution, so I won't give specific examples here, but these general patterns will recur again and again as we think about which nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions are favored.